Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and first off, sorry for the lack of content from the last couple of weeks. I've been going through a combination of being either extremely sick with a throat infection that's made it very hard for me to speak clearly, or I've been busy getting affairs in order for a possible cross-country move in the near future that I may be doing. Which, I may talk about that move more in depth in a separate video as it gets closer or more confirmed that it's happening, because it does affect how videos and streams will happen on the channel, but that is not the point right now, so... What is the point of this video? Well, we have a new synchro to talk about by the name of Dragoonie Knight Ascalon, which is a part of the new Dragoonie support wave that is coming out in Cybernetic Horizon. For those of you wondering why this is super relevant to my channel and why it's something I'm going to be focusing a lot on, let me give you a little background and try to keep it quick for those of you that are unaware. But longtime fans of my channel know that if you ask me what my favorite archetype in the entirety of Yu-Gi-Oh! is, the answer will always be Dragoonies. Hell, Dragoonies were what made this channel start back in 2010, and Dragoonies were what brought me back to making content for this channel in mid-2015, when otherwise I had fully abandoned the channel. So one could safely say that the entire reason I'm on your screen talking to you right now is largely due to my fascination with and love for the Dragoonity theme and very little else. I doubt there's any human being on this planet who has played with or theorized with the deck nearly as much as I have in my history with it, and whether this is a good or bad thing I've yet to really determine, because in some aspects it's held me back as a player, but in other aspects it has propelled me much further forward than I thought I'd ever be in terms of how I approach theory. But I can confidently make this claim because I played a Dragoonie variant deck in almost every local, regional, YCS, and national that I entered from the moment Hidden Arsenal 3 was released in 2010 up until Dragon Ravine got banned on the January 2014 Forbidden Unlimited list. So a solid three years and a bit chunk of my time as a player was spent playing with and modifying this deck through multiple iterations and versions and playing it in almost every tournament I entered from a local level to a national level with extremely minor exception, all the way until Ravine was banned. There were, I think, three instances where I entered any form of tournament where I had to pay money to enter where I did not play Dragoonities. I believe for three years there were legitimately once a year that I did not play this deck at a local or anything higher that I had to pay to enter. And even then, I still experimented with Ravineless Dragoonie hybrids with Hieratics, Dragon Rulers, and Blue Eyes Draw Engines at various points throughout 2014 while Ravine was banned. And then when Ravine came back in 2015, I experimented with new combos and theories catered towards the Necros meta at the time, which is what brought me back to making content for the channel, essentially. And even today, I still take out my stack of Dragoonie cards and spend time trying to identify new combo sequences when I'm bored, which usually just evolve into either Firewall Spams or Omega Hand Loops, because fuck Master Rule 4. <laughs> the card pool versatility Dragoonies have access to was greatly ahead of its time on release, and the amount of things that the deck can do has constantly evolved throughout the years with new releases that can be generically supported by the functionality that the deck provides. It's very good at resource accumulation. Not so much resource management, but accumulating powerful resources quickly and large numbers of them is something this deck is very good at. So needless to say, when new Dragoonie support in Cybernetic Horizon was confirmed, I was pretty excited. The Dragoonie theme, while being very versatile with combo structures, is also unfortunately a super fragile and outdated theme. It very much suffers from the fact that it was a theme designed in 2010 and it is now 2018. Saying the deck is weak to disruption would be the understatement of the century. So I had hopes that the new support wave would include cards that would address those vulnerability issues, maybe give the deck some added plays, added enablers, and stuff like that. But, so, this card... Dragoonity Knight <laughs> Ascalon does not address any of the problems that the deck currently faces and is overall a very subpar and outdated boss monster in general. And that's because it's a level 10 synchro, it's a wind dragon synchro effect monster, level 10, with 3,300 attack and 3,200 defense, so it's definitely not small, it's very much intended to be a boss monster for the deck, in quotations, and it requires one Dragoonity tuner plus one non-tuner monsters, so it breaks the Dragoonity theme of requiring a Dragon tuner plus a non-tuner winged beast monster, you just require a specifically Dragoonity tuner to make it, and you can have a generic non-tuner, so that's a nice change, but not really super relevant, but its effect is you can banish one Dragoonity monster from your graveyard, then target one monster your opponent controls, banish it. If this Synchro Summon monster and its owner's control is destroyed by an opponent's card, by battle or card effect, you can Special Summon one Dragoonity Synchro monster with 3,000 or less attack from your extra deck, 
this is treated as a synchro summon, and you can only use this effect of Dragoon Knight Ascalon once per turn. So it has a hard once per turn floating effect for any of the Dragoon synchros that we currently have had since 2011, being the staple five from Vajrayana to Barka. And then it has the effect of you can banish a Dragoon monster in your graveyard and target a monster your opponent controls and banish it, and that effect is not once per turn in any way. So that effect is actually kind of powerful. It would only be more powerful if it didn't target. It does banish, but it does target, which means that it will inherently be, you know, like shut off by certain cards, but still, it's a really strong removal effect as far as that goes. But when Ascalon was initially announced, I was actually very upset about it, and I'm still kind of annoyed with it that this is what Konami thought the deck needed in 2018, when in reality we only need better enablers for combos because we have infinite off-theme boss monsters that the deck can access. Dragoon Ikus being revealed at least made Ascalon slightly more justifiable as a play option, since before it was only easily summonable with a Leviton combo, which was something you could do with ducks, but it was still very subpar, especially considering how the equip card mechanic works. You would have to have like a bunch of setup for it. But now Ducks plus Kus and Navadriana equipping Kus again can summon Ascalon. So that alone is a pretty cool interaction in a pure vacuum, simply because it means that Ducks inherently fully replaces Legionnaire in every Dragoonity build going forward. Now, no one has played Legionnaire since very early 2013 because it's a weird level and its weak stats are way too much of a negative despite it having very simple and powerful removal interactions for a simple one card summon. But now Ducks fully replaces that functionality with Kus in the game and a simplified duck summon can in theory banish three monsters at minimum from your opponent's field with your very first play, going ducks into Kus, into Vajrayana, not applying Kus's level mod effect, then going Vajrayana equipping Kus, special in Kus, making Kus level four, and summoning Ascalon, that is now three Dragoonies engraved, the ducks, the Kus, and the Vajrayana, and that is just a good, very surface level analysis type of play that you can do with this card, which is pretty powerful in terms of things that you can do with removal options under Master Rule 4. And Ascalon is anything but weak stats-wise, and while subpar, it does have a floating effect, but that's honestly where the good things that I can say about this card really end, unfortunately. Overall, this card is great in a vacuum, but once you start looking at the surrounding picture that is the current game of Yu-Gi-Oh!, you'll notice that this card is terribly outdated as far as its effect goes. It's very much a card that is a 2011 to 2013-ish era boss monster, and is very underpowered by 2018 standards. Hell, this card can most easily kind of be compared to Cosmo Dark Destroyer, which was printed in 2015, and Ascalon still comes up worse in every category to a card designed three years ago. The effects are so closely similar with some very notable differences, but why is Ascalon so much worse despite being designed three years later where a card design is in theory more refined and more clear cut? It kind of boggles my mind a bit. This card would be significantly better if its banish effect was simply once per turn, but was a quick effect, so it could be during either player's turn. Then at least it would be a boss monster that forms its own simple defensive line on top of floating. Now don't get me wrong, its current banish effect is effectively really strong because it's not a once per turn. That's kind of huge for pushes on your own turn. But in the grand scheme of things, you have to be able to go first and set up Disruption, and then survive a turn until your next turn in order to win the game, especially with a deck that's as vulnerable to your opponent's Disruption as Dragoonities are. You're not going to be playing second with this deck and throwing ducks into an Ascalon unimposed. That's just the nature of how this game is played. And we've already talked about Legionnaire, which with minor difference fulfills the same role that Ascalon does have. Legionnaire plus Divine Lance or Ackles can out in theory the same types of cards Ascalon can with a simpler interaction, and Ackles can in theory out more cards than Ascalon because Ackles can at least hit back row. So with a simpler interaction, you can hit different cards that Ascalon could never touch. So you could oversimplify it into Ascalon being no more than an overglorified and upgraded Legionnaire retrain since its function is near identical to out monsters. But we weren't playing Legionnaire to begin with, so like, why is this card necessary? Why is this card the new quote-unquote boss monster that the deck needed? I'm, I'm having trouble trying to understand what Konami's reasoning behind looking at the theme, seeing its history, and going, Oh, people don't play Legionnaire anymore, we just need to make one better. No, that's, that's, that's not how this works. 
That's not what the deck needed. And that's not even talking about the floating effect, which for one thing, should almost never trigger because there's no inherent protection for Ascalon built into itself, or for the rest of the Dragoonity archetype for that matter. There's not a single Dragoonity card that I can recall that has any form of protection from your opponent's targeting or destruction or anything like that. If Ascalon's effect to banish had been a quick effect, it would have at least a little bit of protection for itself, but it doesn't, so that hypothetical goes out the window. So it can easily be Castell or Utopia the Lightning or whatever, so it just won't resolve almost at any point. But even if it did resolve, as it currently stands, there's not a single one of the five Dragoonity Synchros other than this card that is good to summon on your opponent's turn. Now this may change with the rest of the support wave since there is a picture for an OCG event that shows a new artwork for what I assume to be another Dragoonity Synchro that comes later in the support wave. Its artwork depicts what I believe to be Dragoonity Tribus riding a dragon, which might be Koos. It closely resembles that, but we are unsure of the color of Koos because so far we don't have a color picture of it, it's just all black and white. And that's the only part of the picture that I'm unaware of. But it's still the artwork theme that falls in line with that of a Dragoonity Knight Synchro Monster, with a Winged Beast riding a dragon. So now hopefully that card is a good card to float into with Ascalon, or just to make regularly as a regular Synchro, but right now with the other five Dragoonity Synchros that we've had since 2011, the best one to summon off of Ascalon's float effect is actually just Gaybolg, just because it can boost itself's attack points, and that's honestly silly. It's irrelevant as hell, but it's still silly. If Vajrayana had casually been a quick play effect to boost its attack, and was like eight years ahead of its time, and like had been foreshadowing a card like this would exist, then we possibly could have had some cool Ackley's interactions with Vajrayana being floated into off Ascalon. But even that would be a stretch as far as how good it would be, even for this hypothetical which is already being stretched as thin as I can make it as it is. But anyway, those are just my thoughts of this card. I mean, it's definitely a good extra deck card to play because it does allow you to out multiple monsters. So it's definitely a card that we'll see play in Dragoonity builds going forward, uh, especially if the builds do run Leviton because of the fact that we have, you know, so many reborn cards that can summon Leviton from Grave. But at the same time, Leviton bringing back Phalanx is usually better suited for making Link spamming or anything like that, or like any Barka plays. Those are usually you know, better used for link spamming, but I digress. This card is definitely still a worthy one of in your extra deck, despite it just being really annoying that this is the new card that we got. Like, this is definitely not the boss monster we needed, and it doesn't fix any of the deck's problems. It is just a very strong removal option, which is good in its own right. It's just, it's very outdated. That's the entire purpose of this video. This card is not bad by any stretch of the imagination in terms of its effects. It's just very outdated. It's not bad as a card. It's bad in Yu-Gi-Oh. That's the, that's the thing. It's not a bad card. It's just not good in the current state of the game. So, that's what I'm trying to say, but it will definitely be a card that will be played in my Dragoonity list, anybody else's Dragoonity list is a one of, because of how strong its removal option is during your own turn, and I guess that's really the only thing to, to sort of take away from this card, but... But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do, and check out the links in the description if you want to support me directly via Patreon, it helps out a lot, or if you want to check out my Facebook fan page to connect with me there and send me messages and stuff, either one of those may be to your liking, but as I've already said, Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are on this card in the comments down below or anything I may have missed. But other than that, I'll see you in the next video, guys, and take care.